Today, I want to speak to you on a, a subject which I believe really requires a lot more attention in the body of Christ. But before I begin, I'd like to pray to the Lord. Let us bow our heads down in prayer. Abba Father, we thank you for teaching us to make ourselves available for your purposes and pleasure. Holy Spirit, I'm available to you now. And I ask you to speak through me this morning and to accomplish what you intend the holy words that proceed from my mouth to do in the lives of your listeners. Father, as I speak, I also rebuke any negative energy or power that always attempts to take away the good word that proceeds from you. Because the enemy has one strategy and his strategy is to take away any word of God that has to embed in our lives. So I rebuke that. And I want you to listen carefully so that you'll go out there and put into practice what it is that the Lord has sent me to teach you this morning. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Amen. As I said earlier, I'd like to speak on a subject of grave importance to us as followers of Jesus Christ. Because I don't believe that it's given enough attention in the whole body of Christ. And that subject is forgiveness. Everyone say forgiveness. forgiveness. You see, many of us have real difficulty forgiving others for the wrongs that they do to us and which some are still doing to us. But we will shortly be looking at some scriptures which will reveal to you how important, how, how gravely important it is for you to learn and get into the habit of forgiveness. As people who follow Christ, forgiveness is indispensable. In other words, we cannot do away with it. You cannot call yourself a true Christian if you lack the ability to forgive. And the title of our message is in fact a question. And it is intended to cause you to stop and think for a moment. My question to you this morning is, are you clogging up your blessings? I want you to think about this. Are you clogging up your blessings? I once attended um, a lecture on diabetes. And, and sort of heart problems. And in that lecture, I learned that excessive consumption of some fatty foods can clog up the arteries and cause heart problems. Immediately, I became interested in the word clog up. Now, the lecture showed me that some fatty foods can clog up the arteries. In other words, they can prevent the smooth flow of blood into the heart. And as I was preparing to deliver this message on forgiveness, I thought that word is relevant and significant. So I want you to think about the question because at the end of the service it's going to be quite important in everything that I'm going to tell you. So my question is are you clogging up your blessings? You see you may for example say well pastor 
Why are you telling me to forgive? You have no idea what my husband, my wife, or my friends, you, you don't even know what they did to me. And you're telling me to forgive? Brothers and sisters, I never said it's easy. I never said it was easy to forget, uh, forgive. Did I? I haven't said it's easy. But what I'm saying to you is that it's so crucial to our walk with Jesus Christ that if we fail to forgive, maybe, just maybe, we're clogging up our blessings. You see, as Christians, we are being blessed every day. The Bible tells us in the book of Lamentations that my mercies, my love, my blessings are new each morning. So as Christians, we are receiving blessings all the time. But I just beg to differ a little on the fact that if you get too complacent thinking that these blessings are so abundant that you don't want to do anything about forgiveness, just, just, just maybe, you may be clogging up your blessings. And I'm not saying that if you don't forgive, you're not going to go to heaven. I didn't say that either. What I'm saying is, the fullness of the flow of God's blessings into your life may be stumbled by a lack of of forgiveness. Now, the first scripture that I want to throw to you this morning is coming from Mark 11, 25. And what does it say? It says this, and whenever you stand praying, if you have anything against anyone, forgive him that your Father in heaven may also forgive you your trespasses. Now, this is a stark, stark, stark warning. It says, when you stand praying, I mean, we've done that this morning, haven't we? We've stood here praying. The Bible is very, very clear. He says, whenever you stand praying, if you have anything against anyone, forgive him that your Father in heaven may also forgive you your trespasses. In other words, if you stand praying, thinking that the Lord is going to hear you and do everything that you're asking him to do, just stand for a moment and think, have you forgiven everyone? Otherwise, I can tell you with a very, very high degree of certainty that your father in heaven will also not forgive you your trespasses. And I know some of you may say, well, you know, it's not easy to forgive. You have no idea what my wife has done to me. You have no idea what my husband did. You have no idea what that friend of mine did to me. I never said forget, did I? Have I used the word forget? You may not be able to forget what has been done to you, but the Bible is teaching us and telling us and instructing us to forgive. I know friends, people around us, even members of our families have done very serious things. But let me tell you something. Whatever it is that you faced, is it more serious than what our Lord Jesus faced on the cross? Yet, what did he say? He said, forgive them. For they know not what they've done. You, do you know what Jesus Christ went through? He, he didn't just suffer physical punishment. Christ went through humiliation. Christ suffered betrayal. Christ suffered vilification. People were saying horrible things about him. Some people were even spitting at him, abusing him physically. And emotionally. So I don't know what you're carrying with you. But don't tell me that what you're experiencing is worse than what Christ did for us on the cross. 
He took on all these humiliations. He took on all these vilification. He took on all these physical punishment and died on the cross. But even at the death on the cross, he said, forgive them for they know not what they've done. And the Bible as we read also tells us that if we don't learn to forgive and actually put forgiveness into practice, we will not experience the benefit of God's forgiveness of our own trespasses. So that is the first scripture that I want to put uh, in your heads this morning. The second one is in Ephesians 4, verse 30 to 32. Listen to what it says. It starts with, and do not grieve the Holy Spirit of God by whom you were sealed for the day of redemption. Let all bitterness, wrath, anger, clamor, and evil speaking be put away from you with all malice. And be kind to one another, tender-hearted, forgiving one another, even as God in Christ forgave you. The text starts with, do not grieve the Holy Spirit. And we are given the benefit of a whole list of things that if we continue to do, then we are grieving the Holy Spirit, brothers and sisters. One of them is forgiving one another. So don't think that, you see, sometimes we wonder, why is my prayer not being answered? Why have I been asking the Lord to do this and that for me? And the Bible says, whatever I ask him, he'll do for me. And yet, I'm not getting it. I can't give you all the answers to why God doesn't answer all our prayers at the time that we want them to. But let me tell you one thing. Just maybe you're clogging up your blessings because you are not prepared to forgive one another for the trespasses that they may have done against you. Brothers, I'm teaching you something today which I believe if you walk out of this door and begin to practice it, you will allow the fullness of God's blessings into your heart. And, and as I said before, please don't get me wrong. It is not easy to forgive certain trespasses that people have done against us. It is not easy to forget. But I never said it was easy and I never said you should forget it. What I'm saying is forgive. Let go of that incident which causes you heart and pain and just say, because I'm a follower of Jesus Christ, I forgive you for all that you've done against me. Brothers, I don't know what tomorrow will give. I don't know what tomorrow will bring. But I don't want to die having a whole lot of unforgiveness practiced on this earth. I want to die knowing that I had forgiven everything that however horrible it is that people have done against me. I want to live my life modeling everything on my Christ Jesus. And he said very clearly forgive one another. Just as God in Christ forgave you. Look, I don't know why some of our prayers are not being answered. But just maybe that person that you haven't forgiven is the reason why the blessing is not flowing. And don't tell me that those of us here today haven't got someone in their life who has really been a pain. Well, good luck to you if you haven't. But I can tell you that I face spiritual warfare on a daily basis. But we are being told, learn to forgive. And if you call upon the Holy Spirit to come into your life and help you to forgive, he will. 
Because when Jesus was going to heaven, he said, I'm going to send another helper. The Holy Spirit is there to help us in everything that we have difficulty achieving. And if forgiveness is one of the issues for you today, and please, I want you to sit down and think. Stop for a moment. Because our blessings don't come as a result of us being in church every Sunday. You, look, you can spend 50 years of your life going to church every Sunday. If you haven't sorted out issues of your heart, you will not benefit from the blessings of the Lord. The Bible tells us that every Christian is going to face something called spiritual warfare. Ephesians 6 verse 12 says, our struggle is not against flesh and blood, but against the powers, the principalities, the rulers of darkness in heavenly places. Whether you like it or not, the enemy is going to attack you. But then the same Bible also tells us that the weapons of our warfare are not carnal, but they are mighty in God for the pulling down of strongholds. If it is mighty in God, then maybe you're reducing and depreciating the power for you to fight the enemy by not forgiving. I want to be a Christian who is maximizing every gift that God has given me. And he says, the weapons of our warfare are not carnal. We can't fight our enemies by overshouting them. The enemy will attack us, but the weapons of this warfare are not carnal. They are not about how good a fighter I am, but rather they are located in the Lord. They are mighty in God for the pulling down of strongholds. I want to maximize this power, and therefore I don't want to do anything to reduce it. And if I can forgive, I may just have opened another door for the power of God to flow in me. Finally, I want to give you another scripture. And this scripture is so important because every day we stand praying. Yet we forget that we have a covenant with the Trinity. Jesus Christ was once confronted by his disciples and they said, Lord Jesus, Teach us to pray. Teach us to pray. And he taught them what today we call the Lord's Prayer. I want you to put this scripture up there and see one of the things that we are telling the Lord to do, which we aren't doing. When you come into a covenant relationship with someone, it means you're, you're in a contractual relationship. So that he or she will do his or her part of the bargain and you do yours and everything comes together. But listen to something that we say we're doing and asking the Lord, yet in reality we aren't. Let us see the final scripture that I gave you, young man. And it's taken from Matthew 6, verse 11 to 12. You wake up in the morning and you're saying my Lord's prayer. And when you get here, what you're saying is, Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. We are asking the Lord to give us our daily bread. We are asking him to forgive us our debts as we have forgiven those who trespass against us. Yet, in your heart, you haven't forgiven it. And you're asking the Lord to give you your daily bread. Can you see? Can you see the conflict here? You're saying, Jesus, I'm telling you the truth. And I'm holding you to your word. You said, we should pray to you and say, give us this day our daily bread. And forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And yet, you are unable to forgive your debtors. 
How do you expect to receive from this covenant relationship? Do you know that it's a covenant relationship? Because you're telling Jesus, do this for me as I do this. Brothers and sisters, look, you're probably (laughs) going to hear that I've got the reputation of telling you the truth. Some of the things I say in my sermons, you may, you may not like. Why? Because they challenge you. But if we are not prepared to be challenged, how are we going to mature as Christians? You know, I don't want to come here and preach prosperity. Oh, the blessings of the Lord is upon you. Upon who? It's upon you if you're able to live with Jesus Christ the way he wants you to live. That is why I sang, purify my heart. Purify my heart. I want to be holy. I want to be someone who stands apart and have the reputation for doing what you've asked me to do. I don't just want to be a talking Christian. I want to be identified as a true follower of my Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. So let me stop here because I don't want to labor the point, but I'm going to recap for you very quickly. First of all, I walked in here and I said I had a message for you. I said this message is a message that should change your life and change your attitude towards your relationship with Christ. I began by telling you about my experience of going to a lecture where the word clog up was used. It was a lecture on diabetes. And it says, when you eat certain fatty foods excessively, they can clog up your arteries. And immediately, the word clog up became an important word for me in this message that I was going to deliver. Then I gave you my first scripture. My first scripture talked about the fact that if you stand praying, remember to forgive one another. Just as you were forgiven by the Lord. Because if you don't forgive one another, the Lord will not also forgive you. Wow. This is in the Bible. This is not created by man. Then I gave you a second scripture where forgiveness is one of the most important ingredients in what the Holy Spirit does not want to happen. It says, do not grieve the Holy Spirit. Clamor, bitterness. The list goes goes on and then it ends up with be kind to one another, forgiving one another just as. Christ forgave you. This is amazing. It is amazing. Then the third scripture I gave you today was something that we say, we've said it from our childhood till now. Even pagans, non-Christians can recite the Lord's Prayer. Yet there's a key element in the Lord's Prayer which says, Forgive us our trespasses as we forgive. Don't bother asking the Lord then. Because what you're saying is, Lord, forgive me as I forgive. And you're not forgiving. So my question is, are you not clogging up your blessings? I want to leave things here. And... Just say to you, what did Christ Jesus come to this world for? He came to set the captives free. I don't want my service and my sermon this morning just to be a lecture. So I'm here with the anointing of God. And I'm going to pray for anyone. Please come forward. Look. Forget about 
the person next, sitting next to you thinking, oh, what's wrong? Why are you getting up? We don't do that here in this church. Come and receive a prayer. If there's somebody in your life this morning who you're having difficulty forgiving, come and I'll pray for you. Because God has given me the anointing. You see, when Roger spoke with me and we, we, we had a discussion about swapping pulpits, it wasn't just an exercise of friends coming to meet one another and going to one another's church. It's because God had actually given us the messages to say. I didn't come here with any plan. I opened my heart to the Lord and he spoke to me about what message to give you. That is why this morning I'm saying to you, it is meant for someone here. Come to me. I'm a messenger of the Lord. And I'm going to help to pray with you so that when you leave this building, you can go and practice what has been said. There may just be this, which is a stumbling block in why certain things are not happening. Because Forgiveness is a major part of our relationship with Christ. Throughout the Bible, we see Jesus himself modeled it. And in various parts of the Holy Scriptures, we are told about the importance of forgiveness. So may we stand.